led the pledge um, to give my version of what I believe our mission is. But before I do, um, it came to me that uh, since we've kind of decided to bridge um, both the mission statement of the commission and the department, um, I think it, it's important to open this process up to the entire department. And I'm not sure how we should do that, but um, I, I believe that everybody has um, good information to share and ideas to contribute. So um, if we can think of a way to either involve them in the process of, um, of rewriting this at the end when we've all kind of muddled over it ourselves or um, uh, accept ideas throughout the process. Um, I think that if we're going to rewrite the mission statement for the entire department, um, it might be good to involve everybody. So, and I also think we need a way to keep track of this information. So as we share our um, version of the mission, um, if there's like a Google Doc that we could use or some way we can track everybody's ideas so that when it does come time for that formal rewriting, we have um, documentation of what's already been written. So I'm not sure if there's an efficient way to do that, but um, it might save us in the long run instead of going back through everything frantically. What did you say? What was... So, we could use our city out. emails. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll have to give you a tutorial on those. We're, we're sorry about that. Um, I think one of the things you could do, uh, Commissioner Henderson, is to maybe uh, uh, maybe set up a work meeting where we okay. could have the commissioners and some staff meet and mm -hmm. talk about it just in generalities, and that'll give us something to start. I, I use the Google Docs for a number of other organizations that I'm involved in, and I think that's probably a good way we can send out a draft uh, on Google Docs, let people look at it, then you can go through and make your edits and then submit them, and it goes out to everybody. Right. Um, so if you would like to do that, we could certainly look at, you know, sometime in, in June setting up a day when we can meet uh, specifically on that topic. Or um, it, it's possible at our June meeting we may have, uh, I just got out of the meeting with the Landmark Committee, um, we may have a joint meeting with them uh, out at the uh, Eno's house. Uh, so um, that agenda might be a little weird. So maybe sometime later in June we could get together as a group uh, just real quickly thank you and, and do that okay. would you like us to set that up then and see what availability is like sure for a working meeting that, that first week in june 5th to the 9th i'm not available but okay. I, would, I would be happy to be a part of that meeting so how about later in june mm -hmm. maybe the last week or the next to last week I vacation be here. yes i will be here the last um how about the, the, the week of our meeting the week of the Oh, that's the one you're gone? No, no, you're here uh, the second week? I'm here the second week. The 13th is a Tuesday I'm here. So Let's, maybe we can just, okay. maybe we can go out to the landmark. Uh, if it happens, they're not sure that they're going to be able to get it on their agenda. And if it happens, then we can do that and then just come back here and have a quick working meeting on it. That'll okay. just be the only agenda item. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank so you. So just plan on maybe hanging out a little bit longer. Okay. Um, so then... I believe our mission is to strengthen the community through quality and accessible recreation opportunities and services, enriching programs and beautiful parks. That's what I came up with. Um, Mr. Posada, if we could have the roll. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Batterson. Aye. Over oh, here. Commissioner Burtnett. Yes. Commissioner Clary. Yes. And Commissioner Henderson. Here. And Commissioner Velasco is absent. The minutes of the April 11th, 2017 mission meeting have been distributed. Has everybody had a chance to read through those? Aye. Yes. Yep. Are there any changes? <coughs> Then they'll be approved as distributed. I have no public comment, comment slips. So we'll move on to our first order of business, item 4A, retirement of Jorge Guevara. Uh, would you like me to read the resolution or would you like to give some information first, Mr. Posada? No, go ahead and read the resolution. We'll do that later. Where is the end? 
All right. And this is resolution number 2017-04, a resolution of the Recreation and Parks Commission of the City of Santa Maria, California, recognizing Jorge Guevara's retirement after 35 years of service. Whereas Jorge Guevara has served the residents of the City of Santa Maria and the Recreation and Parks Department from July 10th, 1982 to May 11th, 2017, and whereas community members and fellow employees have benefited from his 35 years of knowledge, experience, hard work, and dedication, and whereas Jorge has a wealth of information related to the inner working of the department, which makes him an invaluable resource to, to city and community events, and whereas Jorge has been a valuable employee whom others came to rely on to get the job done, and for his willingness to go above and beyond his work duties to ensure the success of the organization. Whereas now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Recreation and Parks Commission, City of Santa Maria, California, as follows. Jorge Guevara is recognized for his 35 years of dedicated service to the City of Santa Maria and the Recreation and Parks Department. The Commission wishes Jorge and his family many years of good health and happiness. Thank you. Okay, so now I can I can talk. So um, uh, let's see. So Jorge and, and his brother Jose worked with me at the Menami Center when we opened Menami Center in 1979, 1980. So in actuality, he's been here longer than that. Uh, Jorge worked through the Allen Hancock College, what they used to call a work study program back then. Came in and, and worked with that then. He, he stayed on, and when I moved uh, into a uh, rec supervisor role, he came with me and started to work in our recreation programs, after school programs, our Special Olympics, our support programs, uh, uh, handling the operation of our, uh, uh, our fleet back then, which was a lot smaller for our, our transportation in the rec division. Uh, Jorge just, I mean, it was always not who you could count on, but you knew you could count on Jorge because he was always available. Uh, cell phones, I think, were, were his downfall because now we can call him any time. Before, I'd have to kind of track him down somewhere. Uh, he's been uh, available to everybody in the department uh, for any kind of an event at any time. And I, I mentioned to, uh, to uh, the city manager and the department head meeting yesterday that you know he'll, he will be sorely missed to for all the things that he does, uh, including that meeting, getting it set up and making sure it was ready to go for them yesterday. So Jorge, I appreciate it. I know we've been friends a long time and you know, been through ups and downs on uh, our uh, families and losses and you know, just life. And so I wanna thank him very much for his friendship and for his hard work for the department. I don't think anybody in this room can question that, his commitment to us. So Jorge, thank you very much. Certainly, you're welcome to have a few words, Jorge. <laughs> I just like to thank you, the city, the department, for giving me the chance to learn and grow as a person. I uh, I got to know a lot of people. I learn a lot, and I feel that I leave a lot of friendships right here. And. I'll be always willing to help in any way that I can. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have that in our resolution? I do. Your I don't have a presentation. No. Oh. Is that one? So if you go ahead and sign that, oh, you do have to have a motion. Right. So. Yes, a motion would be in order. So moved. I'll okay. second. All right. Uh, so then it is, oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it is passed and adopted at our regular meeting of the Recreation and Parks Commission of the City of Santa Maria held this eighth day of May 2017. Thank you. And we'll give him the official uh, hanging version uh, so he has that for on his last, last day. Okay. So thank you, Hori. Thanks for coming because I know it, 
We had to send a bodyguard or I guess an escort so that you'd be sure to get here. So. <laughs> well, I don't know you personally, but I know that it's folks like you that make our city, our community, um, a great place to live and work. And um, I'm very appreciative for all of you given to the department and our community. Thank you for giving us a good name. Yes. <laughs> I have your volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. And you don't have to stay. <laughs> I think Jason said he was going to take you out after. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on to our next order of business, item 4B, the summer program presentation. Mr. Davey, if you have some information for us. All right. So, commissioners, thank you for having me here today. I'm uh, just doing a quick, well, maybe not so quick, presentation on the various summer programs that the Remix team uh, will be offering uh, the community uh, this summer. So, without further ado, uh, Team Remix um, consists of myself, Maribel Salazar, who's a full-time recreation technician, Adam White as a facility specialist too, who oversees the team programs and the Yale Maldonado Youth Center, Brandy Uregas, uh, who oversees youth programs at ACES, and then Jeanette Blanco, uh, who handles all of our special or community events. ACES. ACES? Stands for? Um, after School Enrichment. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so one of the programs that we're having this summer, we've been offering for the last uh, probably eight years, is our Teen Trails program. This is a free program where we take teens um, just out on hikes um, throughout the, our local area, San, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, uh, areas and just go on small hikes and those are free to the free to our teens and most of them are very easy trails Bob, Bob Jones trail is a, like I think it's a, a two and a half miles part of its paved pretty easy hikes but just get them out and get them to see the local area uh, teen treks is one of our uh, programs where same thing we try to get them out in the community but this is where they're participating and we're going to a vendor and they get to participate in some sort of an activity. So as you see there, ocean kayaking in Morro Bay, Cloud 10, which is kind of an uh, adult sized bounce house arena, ice skating, Avila Beach, and then we're gonna go bowling at this uh, Rancho Bowl. Those are fee-based programs and the only, only thing that the teens or the families pay for is whatever it costs to, to go to that uh, venue. Just a look at some of our teen trails and teen treks events. Bob Jones Trail, that's the Avila Lighthouse at the top, kayaking. Last year we went zip lining in Santa Margarita, and then that's the ravine water slides in Paso Robles, as, just as an example of the things that we do. Uh, this week we are having a, a youth center open house from 6 to 8 p.m. Hopefully you have all received an invitation in your email. Uh, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be providing uh, tours of the youth center, we'll have some informational booths, playing some games, encouraging teens to sign up for our programs, and then it's an opportunity for families. It's one of the rare opportunities we have where we allow adults and families to come in, meet our staff, find out what the youth center is all about. And then our summer staff training, we're, we're preparing right now, our dentist is preparing to uh, hire about 24 recreation leaders for this summer. Uh, where we'll have 11 sites uh, in our in our parks and uh, we'll be doing staff orientations assuming we're still on time on track <laughs> staff orientations june 5th we'll be receiving uh, some uh, trainings from the food bank community action commission who provides free lunches on june 6th uh, june 7th the uc extension will be providing catch training which is sports uh, <coughs> training and then on june 8th all of our rec leaders will be getting first aid CPR AED training, mandated reporter training, and then we're starting a new program this summer and hopefully it'll carry through. It's a new recognition program. And so you look at the picture there, you'll see um, all of our staff have to wear a city ID badge. And uh, what we're doing is we're ordering these buttons and those buttons indicate what trainings they've received. Um, and so sort of a, a pride thing for our staff, but also we want the community to know how well trained our staff are. And I think in the past, you know, we haven't been able to pass that on to the community about how well trained the staff are. And so that's just one way to let the public know. And we have our mission statement at the bottom. 
This is last year's, uh, part of last year's staff orientation. So just some of the equipment that they all received that they then took out to the parks uh, to use with our youth. Our Teens Love Cooking Program, that's a youth program, 12 to 16 year olds, where we just do some healthy cooking classes and, and that sort of thing, and those are all free. Our food pantry, this is something that we do every month. However, we have what we call the big food pantry, uh, July 27th from 6 to 8 at the Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, we'll be helping to provide a thousand meals that day. Uh, we'll have 33 agencies and partners that will be helping uh, us out. And then there'll be a tribute to our vets parade um, out on uh, Pine Street. Thank you. And this is a calendar. You have all of these in the packet, by the way. This is a calendar of all the monthly uh, food pantry events, if you'd ever like to show up and volunteer. And just some pictures from last year's food pantry. And again, if you look at the bottom left corner, you can see all the packages of food that we package up that families can take home. And then there's also um, health um, programs that are there that are being offered. So in that particular case, we have flu shots were being offered. I did that for you, Alex. There's an audio file, but it didn't work. Uh, so a brand new program we're bringing this summer is our Junior Giants program. This is a non-competitive youth baseball uh, league. It's for boys and girls ages uh, 5 to 12. And um, we, will, we are uh, running this program. Hmm, those dates are not correct. I apologize. I believe those are, oh, the, that's registration. Registration April 17th through May 31st, and then the league starts in June. Um, and this is just an emphasis on confidence, integrity, teamwork, leadership. It's been a really good partnership so far. The Junior Giants pretty much provides everything. They do the marketing in the area. They provide the flyers. They provide equipment, pitching machines, gloves, the shirts. I mean, they pretty much uh, um, supply everything. And then every week there's some sort of a program that the kids have to go through. They're going to learn about teamwork and leadership. And then they get a prize from the Giants. And so they're things like bobbleheads and that sort of thing, tickets to games, that kind of stuff. So it's really going to be a great program. Our Girls' Night Out program, another free event. Uh, this is for girls only. And as you can see there, we're going to go to a beach bonfire. We'll go to the movie theater. And then we'll do some, we're having somebody come in from Macy's to do makeovers for the girls. This is more of a, rather than a makeover, it's more of a class on how to do makeup. Uh, 12 to 17, junior high and high school. And then uh, our Movies in the Park program. We'll have four Movies in the Park this year. Again, those are all free for the community um, of all ages to come and attend. And then our Concerts in the Park, also free to the community, and we have four of those. And then something new we're, we're going to do is we're going to have what's called neighborhood block parties. So last year when we started our Safe and Strong program, uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to do safe, uh, safe and Strong is so that we could get into the communities, get to know those individual neighborhoods, the, the families in those neighborhoods, and really connect with them. And so um, we now have movies and concerts in the park. And what we want to do is rather than just have a movie in a park or just have a concert in the park, this is going to be more of a small festival where we can invite the, invite the neighborhood to come to us. We can meet with them, get to know them again one, once again, have families meet our staff, um, and provide some, let them know of some services that are available in Santa Maria for them. So we're calling those neighborhood block parties. And again, this is our Safe and Strong uh, program that we'll be starting this summer. We have 11 parks. Um, these are the parks that we've designated here. They're a little bit fluid. We're still trying to nail down which parks, but that's, that's almost perfect right now. We have Manami Park and or New Love Park there. We haven't quite figured that out. Um, but again, those are all free um, for our youth. And there's some pictures of our Safe and Strong programs that we had last year. So at our Safe and Strong programs, if you look at the picture in the bottom left corner, we provide them a free lunch, and those are either provided by either the Community Action Commission or the Food Bank. Um, Oak, Oakley Park, is, as an example, Monday through Friday, we probably give out 100 meals per day. And then other parks like um, 
um, Atkinson, we were only giving out five or 10. And so that's why we're not going to be at Atkinson. This summer we're gonna find another park that we think will have a bigger impact. So we've added Russell Park this year. And we'll have a safe and strong kickoff event on June 21st at Grogan Park. That's a little bit fluid. We're also talking about Oakley Park. We have some partners from Coca-Cola, Food Bank, Community Action Commission, and, and several others we're working on. And we'll be providing games, food, music. This is our kickoff from last year. It was at Grogan Park, and I think we had about 300 people come to that event. And then our drama, drama camp and our choir camp. Uh, last year we did, the, um, we did um, uh, Aladdin, uh, Disney's Aladdin last year. And we had approximately 60 people enrolled in our program between choir and the drama. Um, now, now we started the choir to kind of help with drama. So the choir team provides the music for the drama program. Uh, this year we'll be doing Disney's Lion King and we have um, our, our director um, canceled on us just a couple weeks ago, so we have a brand new director lined up, Irene Riley, who's a PCPA student, um, and so she's trying to get more experience directing. And uh, Caroline Hiramatsu, she'll be our assistant director, and Clancy Salas, who's a local young lady who's sang for me at other events, she'll be our choir instructor. And just a few pictures of choir and drama from last year. It doesn't look like 60 or 80, but that's because choir is way off to the right. And then our 4th of July celebration will be happening in front of the um, Sierra Vista or Pioneer Valley High School. Uh, it's a free event from 7 to 10 o'clock. And uh, we haven't, we just met today, so we don't have all the plannings there. So it's a short, short uh, slide. But well, we're doing something. <laughs> National Night Out, August 1st at the Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, we'll be giving out, they'll have lots of vendors giving out free food. Uh, I think there's going to be a parade, some health screenings, et cetera, et cetera. And then our mini chef and junior chef classes. Uh, and these are just really basic. That's not really a representative of the, the picture's not a representative of what we really do. Uh, but they're chef classes, they're making some healthy meals and that sort of thing. I just like the picture. <laughs> I think I promised that little girl I was gonna use her picture one day. And then we'll have our city picnic this summer, September 16th, uh, and that wraps us up for the summer. So. There's nothing to do in Santa Maria. Yeah, we'll be a little busy. <laughs> Thanks. It's a lot of fun. It's like a lot of work. <laughs> the slideshow alone was a lot of work. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, you're Good job, Jason. Really Thank you. Great. All right. I don't have anything listed under item five, yeah. the agenda for new business. So we'll move on. The next order is um, item six A, the master art plan update. Mr. Smitherman, you would be so kind. Uh, we are looking to move back the date of the public hearing for the master art plan to June 22nd at 6.30 right here in this wonderful place. Um, we, the public art committee met last week and agreed with that. Um, and so we're going to do a couple of revisions and come up with some options to present and uh, move forward with the public hearing on that date. So Dennis has to be tactful. I don't. So basically what we're running into is resistance to some of the concepts within the art plan and, and, and the biggest one is the uh, developer related fee. Uh, we have a group of developers who are considering that it should be considered a tax and should go to a vote for the people. Um, city attorney's office is doing some research. Their initial research showed that it is, in fact is a fee. And so that fee can be attached to new development. And when I think when you all reviewed the, the fee program, what it does is it sets aside a requirement that a new development would have to uh, earmark 1% of its project overall costs to public art. And that can either be provided in a way in their project where they actually put in public art as part of their project 
or they could take that 1% and contribute it to a fund that the city would maintain to fund public art projects like the utility box paintings or the sculptures around uh, town, something along those lines. Um, or they could do a combination depending on what their, you know, what their desire was. Uh, Dennis presented the plan uh, before the Planning Commission uh, last month and uh, got mixed reviews from the commissioners. Um, I think he's been working really hard to uh, uh, develop options, which is one of their suggestions. You know, can we look at a, a different fee? Can we look at a different uh, uh, scale of projects that we would be considering? Um, I think for the most part, uh, it's just a matter now of fine tuning. Uh, and resolving the issue of whether it's a fee or a tax. I think those are the, the key the key issues that Dennis is going to be facing over the next few weeks to, to get that addressed. Um, I think I said it the last time we talked about it is that we were, the city really hasn't done anything to promote the arts in a very, very long time uh, it, because of fiscal constraints. And those constraints aren't really much better today. But... Um, uh, our approach here was to show that there is a value not only in art, but in the individuals who do art, the artists, and that they uh, should be provided the opportunity here locally to, you know, present their wares. Right now, a lot of our artists have to travel out of the area to um, get any kind of an income off of their, their trade or their craft, I guess. Uh, so, you know, we, we think it's important. Uh, we think that it's something that uh, the community, you know, now over 100,000 people should be supporting it, supportive of the arts. Um, there's a lot of kids on their way up through our programs here that I think could definitely see value in developing their own artistic talents if they see more art, you know, in the community. And not just the visual arts, certainly the performing arts and some of the others, but the initial tackle here is to hit the visual arts. Um, and Dennis, uh, just to uh, compliment him on his efforts with the, uh, with the uh, utility boxes, you know, we talked about those challenges and finally they're up and done and I have not heard one negative comment yet about them. Uh, he's also worked on the, uh, on securing the art for the, uh, uh, Perlman Park gazebo area. Uh, that's almost wrapped up. Got one, I think one more panel to go there. Um, and then also in the, uh, the panel across the street at the mall, uh, you know, that uh, documents our railroad history, our aviation history and things. So, you know, we, we've made some major endeavors. Uh, his other project, uh, he covered a meeting for me May 1st with the Minerva Club uh, for Buena Vista Park. Uh, the plan there is to we're going to set aside 1% of our budget uh, to uh, fund some kind of art projects there. Uh, there's some tile work we're looking at. There's some um, um, use of um, railroad, uh, old, there used to be a railroad that ran down the middle of, uh, of uh, Main Street. And we, several years ago, we salvaged several feet of that railroad that was buried under the, the asphalt. So uh, Dennis has been talking to local artists about using that to come up with a piece of artwork that would, you know, show something about our history with, with railroading. And our uh, railroad museum people are really excited about that, and they're, they want to be involved in that. His meeting with Minerva was to talk about the, the need or the, our desire to maybe have them consider um, some piece of art that would uh, commemorate their effort at Buena Vista Park. Um, um. <coughs> yes, so there's some ideas out there. So we're trying to push some of these things and, and you know, take this first step ourselves in, in as far as this art project goes. So. so just to be clear, from us, it would be obviously beneficial for us to attend this meeting on the 22nd and possibly make public comment. Absolutely. There will be time available for you to to speak um, and I have talked to a couple of commissioners already and so if you're interested please be prepared for June 22nd meeting is there anything else that we can do to kind of help this move forward because I really do believe that there's a strong desire for this in our community um, and it would be um, disappointing if um, the meeting was solely attended by Grumpy. 
Those who are opposed based on their perception of the tax status. And, and certainly, you know, I think it's, it's your role as, you know, the advocates for, you know, our department and our community efforts to talk to people in the community and invite them to come out. And you are right. Uh, typically, the people who show up are those who are usually going to be negatively impacted by it. Uh, I think if the committee, you know, the process is it goes to the Planning Commission, then eventually they end up at City Council. So the, the initial effort with the Planning Commission is to uh, have the community step forward and say, yes, you know, this, we're supportive of this. We think it's important for our community. That's where you can help. Uh, those same people and yourselves, at, uh, when, if it advances to the City Council, you know, would again be asked to come and, and give some testimony there as to the value. That you feel it, it has so right what time is the meeting 6 30. that'll be the planning commission meeting here in this room yeah we will probably uh, uh, talk with you at the june meeting a little bit more with options when we get to the options component of it great okay thank you thank you then moving on, item 6B, the Mayor's Youth Task Force update. Is this you, Ms. Raper? That would be me. Thank you. There's a lot of good things happening in this community, and I know the staff at the Recreation and Parks are very excited to be a part of it. So we are having a Mayor's Task Force on youth safety. Many of the plans... <coughs> Many of the plans say it's a, a prevention of violence plan, but we wanted to make it be very um, positive as opposed to continuing the word violence, violence. Um, in February, the city council took this item to city council, and it was unanimously approved. As I, I have worked with the city of Santa Maria a long time, and they are so good at providing um, resolution to some of the problems that we face as a community. The reason why this task force came up, because over the past 20 years, the city of Santa Maria averaged between one to three murders per year, which was well below the national average. However, recently we experienced a wave of violence between December 2014 and January 2016, a period of 14 months with 21 murders. This was well above the national average. Most of those murders were gang related and many of them were youth. So we decided to get together and find a solution. So the city of Santa Maria is working with the California City's Violence Prevention Network to assist with a youth violence safety plan. The entity has, this entity has been very successful in addressing gang issues, particularly in Northern California. The first time we met with the consultant was with a coalition meeting with another group of concerned citizens. And literally, it was a 4th of July celebration. People were walking around with guns. Pretty soon you'd see somebody get shot in the arm. Pretty soon you'd see somebody try to get run over by a car. It was something that I thought you only see in a movie. They did a violence, they called theirs a violence prevention plan, and they were able to eradicate the majority of that violence. So we are hoping to have the same success here. Our issue is not as relevant as it was in some of those cities. Um, however, um, we've come together. We've had our first meeting. It was on April 24th at the Shepherd Hall. We were very pleased to have 33 community leaders that represented all venues in our community. Law enforcement, elementary school, high school district, youth service providers, and there was a synergy coming on. So we are hoping to deliver a youth safety plan within the next six months. Some of the tasks that we have before us is I've blocked out a week of time from eight to five to meet with service providers so we can understand what they're doing to prevent violence efforts so that we can add to the gaps that exist. 
The next meeting is on May 15th at 8.30 in the morning at Shepherd Hall. I would love to have you there. There is an opportunity to give uh, public comment at that time. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Does anybody have any, any questions? Okay. I will hope ever be out of town May 15th. Okay. So no, no worries. There will be more meetings. Okay. Well, I don't have to say anything, but I will anyway. I think that this 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 effort, you know, is something that that uh, Teresa has been working on really diligently over the last several months. And um, to her credit, you know, I, th I really think that it, the the reason we had the turnout that we did at that meeting was because she really did work hard to get these people informed and get them out there and explain to them the the, the issue. So beyond that, you know, it is the mayor's role to head up the event and, and the activities of this group. And the ultimate goal is to have the plan. Then we're gonna fall back on a group of the providers. You know, it's gonna end up with the, the foot soldier, the person with the boots on the ground that's gonna be doing these direct services. So the inventory that she's gonna do is, is critical for the policy committee as they're known to really decide where they're going to go. You can't go down one street if you're not going to find a nonprofit that's able to support that, that particular effort. The other challenge that we face is that in order to get this done, you know, some nonprofits, uh, they're barely operating as it is on shoestring budgets. So how do they gear up to do something different and what funding is available? And that's another component that, that the group needs to look at, in my opinion, to figure out how to how do you get somebody to take on counseling for you know an individual with these particular problems? You know, if there is no funding out there to do that, um, these groups are going to have to find it. So we're hoping that we can we can come up with ways to not only come up with a plan but to figure out a way to fund that plan. Um, Eddie has just been doing an outstanding job. You know, Teresa mentioned at the last meeting. You know, he's hit the road running, so to speak, and he's just out there with kids all over the area. So that's great, but he's only one guy. You know, and uh, uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done. Uh, and again, Teresa's kind of picked up that load with her partners at the city manager's office and at the police department. So um, yeah, it'll it'll evolve. And I hope that if you get a chance to go to a meeting and and nothing else, just observe what's going on. That would be great. And I put goals and objectives on your mm -hmm. paper Thank you. stacks in case mm -hmm. you were interested. So. Just to clarify, the safety plan is something that's going to be developed within, over the next six months. They're hoping that we will have enough knowledge and consensus after seven meetings of what's called policy advisory committee. Okay. Then they will set the goals and objectives, as Alex mentioned, for the service providers, and mm -hmm. we will be a big part of the leadership in the technical committee. The technical committee has a really good synergy already when we met with the um, consultants for the first time there was the dignitaries and then there was some people in the middle and the people that we work with with safe and strong and all the programs were just like and yeah we could do this we can do this it's it's a really good place to be at the technical committee because their passion is all for children so i think it will be great it's going to be a lot of work but we're willing to <clears throat> stay with it until we get it accomplished all right, just to make sure, May 15th at 8.30 at yes. Shepherd Hall? Yes, it's hard on and Monday mornings, but that's the time that most of the people yeah, can make that's, it. That's fine. Um, are all of these meetings open to the public yes. for input as well? Correct. Okay, and so May 15th is the next meeting, and then are there regular, like, the second Monday of the month, well, we or have, is it? What we have done thus far, it's really hard to get those dignitaries together. Right. So we are asking them to bring their calendars, and we're, we're going through and trying to set the date at that time. Okay. Okay. But it does get publicly noted, so notice so it's out so that people can yeah, It's posted like right the city council. Perfect. Reports. I'll share that information. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing further on that. Then we're moving on to item 7, informational reports. Um, if we could have the budget update for April from Mr. Smitherman. You bet. With 83.3% of the fiscal year completed, the department is under budget by 2.14%. Very good. Which means what? 
I look blue. Which means uh, after forecasting, we're, we look uh, pretty close to finishing our year at about 99.9% of budget. <laughs> Very good. I think the other thing that Dennis has been working on with the budget of late has been forecasting out for the rest of the year, which they like to know where, where we think we're going to end up. Um, but we're also looking at, um, at budget reduction plans uh, for uh, the upcoming year. Uh, I mentioned before that the city, you know, uh, PERS issues are significant. And so um, the uh, city manager's office and finance department are trying to come up with plans. So we presented them with a budget reduction plan for our department. Then uh, it's just walk that over to them today. And uh, basically, uh, the, the ask is to, you know, what can your department do with a 5% with a budget reduction? What, what, what are the impacts of that? So we worked through that exercise, presented that, and more to come, especially those of you that are on the budget committee will hear more as that uh, evolves. We are moving into the second part of the two-year budget, the 2017-18 of the 16-18 budget. So uh, we'll be seeing some, some budget changes in, in, in that uh, probably in the next two month time frame. Okay. And we have our meeting set for May 24th yes. at 2.45, correct? Yes. Great. Not to be changed. Not to be changed. <laughs> Very good, so we have item 7B, noteworthy activities. Um, the April report was included in our packet. Are there any comments or clarification? No. Um, under the Parks Division, uh, the streetscape on the Enos Rancho project. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I drive down there even when it's out of my way just to look at all the beautiful plants. It's, it's coming along beautifully and I can't wait for the rest of the development to kind of fall into place. But that first part of it, um, if it's any indication of what's to come, it's very exciting. So good work. Then on is there any official business conducted by a member meetings we've attended mm -hmm. would you like to give an update yes Ms. well um, Commissioner Carey and I just attended the um, park development meeting today oh. and thank you Jim that was and I mean we have what is eight or ten uh, developments that are in full progress right now and they they do the city just does a fantastic job on getting those um, landscaped it's, it's good to see everything process thank you okay. thank you I believe we have notes from all America City meeting recap do did Commissioner Carey, or speak on that, or I can. I provided Commissioner all of you. Yeah. Looked good. Okay. Anything to add? Okay. My understanding was you were going to come back to the meeting and just share some of the things we discussed. Okay. Do we, would you like to start? Um, regarding the All America City Committee. Okay. Um, sure. Could turn your mic on, please. It's not on. You can't okay. hear me. I couldn't see the little lights. All right. Okay, it's on. Yes. Okay. Regarding the All America City Committee, we had a good meeting. We did. Look, we could do this together. <laughs> um, as it turns out, there's there are no longer any sitting members of the All America City Committee, so it's a clean slate, so to speak. It's the positive way of looking at it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so we were kind of brainstorming to figure out where, you know, what can we do with this, and and we had had the idea to possibly give it over to the chamber, and I had talked to Bob Warak, and you know, who's like Mr. All America City guy, and he loved the idea since we, through the years, so many different plans had been exhausted. And you know, not real successful, but we came up with a, a little plan to possibly have. We're going to continue. First off, let me just say we're going to continue the um, the award that, that that we give the um, the spirit. What is it? All America, Spirit's the Spirit of Santa Maria. Maria. Sorry, Spirit of Santa Maria Award because it's it's a cool concept, and we worked on that for months to come up with it. 
But we're also going to plan, hopefully, an All-America City Picnic, which we'll do once a year, and the entire city would be involved and invited, and it would just be kind of a celebration of our city and our population. <coughs> and we thought that would just be kind of cool. <laughs> so that's, that's where we are. I don't know. Indeed, we, we began the meeting talking about what All America City means. I had zero experience, and so I was very much interested in learning. And one of the things that repeatedly came up were two ideas. Uh, the first idea is we want to market our, com our city. We have a great city. Everybody here agrees with that. And we wanted to uh, talk about how do we market and how do we how do we use our All America City designation as a tool for that. The other big idea that we talked about with regards to the All America City designation award was remembering what it was that our city did a number of years ago to become an All America City and use those same principles as re remembering those same principles as we conquer our current difficulties. For example, the mayor's task force on youth violence. And so we talked about several different ideas. What does this look like? And, you know, do we use our All America City to put on particular events? And we kind of bounced that idea and we thought perhaps that would be better done by a group of volunteers, civic-minded persons, as Cindy put in here, uh, to, to, to get some of those tasks done. But what we could do is exactly what Commissioner Kerry just suggested, and that is, what if we used our influence as the Rec and Park Commission, as members from our uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, perhaps even our members of our, our city council, et cetera. How can we use our influence and our, our passion for our city to put something forth that would be really good with these two ideas in mind, marketing our city and remembering principles to make ourselves great again? And, sorry, strike that. Um, do wonderful <laughs> things in the future. Uh, that would be really positive for our community. And so I think, I believe it was Commissioner Kerry who initially came up with the idea of doing a, an All-America City picnic, barbecue, etc. My contribution to it was I want to be one of the judges on each of the food contests. <laughs> so I'll be completely impartial. But I just want to be on the. I think you were really specific. It was going to be the pie contest, right? <laughs> that may or may not be true. <laughs> so you know, have a good old-fashioned potato sack races, watermelon eating contest, but have it with a greater vision of promoting our city and civic mindedness. And one idea that we came up with was the 23rd of June this year. Just kidding. 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a heart attack, Jim. <laughs> um, when we got the award, the National Civic League came here, and we did hot dogs, apple pie, and it, very similar. You're bringing it back to where it started. Sure. And it would be, it's laborsome for us, but if we got enough community volunteers, we should celebrate that. We should bring it back and be, celebrate the things that make us who we are. Yep. Because everybody wants to bash, and it's easier to bash than to step up and do the right thing. Indeed. God, I sound like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, commissioners, for meeting on that because I mean we really needed some insight, and some direction. So at least we have something laid out now. Awesome. And you're not done. We'll have a follow up, <laughs> obviously, on this. But I think it's important that we at least know where we want to go. We know the Spirit Award is going to continue. Mm -hmm. 
if the timeline that uh, Cindy put out is acceptable, that's the one we're going to follow. And then we'll continue to organize around the event uh, that you, you're talking about. We'll see what we can come up with. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, Mr. Smitherman, Commissioner Carey, and myself met um, May 2nd, I believe, yes. to um, talk about arts. And Mr. Smitherman kind of brought us up to date on um, the master plan. We also talked about um, the second phase of the utility box art project. The first phase, I think, was fantastic. They're beautiful. Um, they're a lot of fun to see, and I think the second phase will be nice um, to see as well. Um, Mr. Smitherman said that um, the release for that second phase will be May 29th, um, and judging starting early July, and then announcement for artists who've been selected for um, July 17th, um, which is seems very quick and fantastic. I love it, especially in the summertime when there's a lot of energy around being outside and um, whatnot. Um, also, the artist was selected for the um, 12, 12 by 12 inch tiles for uh, the Buena Vista Park. And um, I think we're all very excited to see that project come along as well as the park. Um, and just um, reiterate the, the need to come out and support um, this plan because it's a great plan. Um, I think it'll do a lot for our community. Um, it's something that we need. It's moving on to the next page and I think that the more support we have for it, um, the better. So thank you for the meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Just, I, yeah, I, everybody said my things. I Park Development Committee today. Uh, our All America City Committee and our Arts Committee. That I'm was busy. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Three meetings went. <laughs> There's nothing productive. to do. Nothing to do in San Antonio. Are there any reports of community interest items or official Not business? Yet. Mr. Posada, do you have a director's report for us? Just a couple of recap, a couple of things. So uh, one of us, the park, came up in your comments. Uh, we did meet today with the uh, company that ha the city has secured to um, <clears throat> manage and, and build the project. Um, they've not been awarded a bid, um, I mean, a contract yet. Right now we're kind of, uh, Jim and I met with them today to kind of go through the, the nuances of the project. Uh, the project has a budget. Uh, of course, the estimates are significantly more than the budget. So uh, the purpose of the meeting today was to kind of look at alternatives to uh, the specific improvements there and the specific items that the architect calls out for in, in the plan. So Jim uh, and Roy Chinente, the park supervisor, are going to kind of come up with some alternatives to present to them and see if we can find some cost-cutting measures. Uh, this is a different approach. Uh, typically, you have a specification, you go out to bid, and you know that's it. You know, low bidder gets the contract. In this particular instance, we're using a state clearinghouse uh, as a contractor, man project manager out of San Luis Obispo, and they are putting together um, the um, the pricing with using s local contractors for doing the work. Um, right now. Um, like I said, Jim and his staff are working on, on some alternatives for them. We're trying to keep the park as real close to the plan as possible. Uh, but there were some, uh, I, there will be some, hopefully they're not visual to the public changes that will have to be made to it. Uh, some of the work we can do in-house uh, um, to kind of delay the project. If you haven't been by the project lately, uh, the restroom building has been completed. That's great. Um, <laughs> Um, I went to my two painting consultants, uh, the two uh, department secretary and our uh, office, uh, our office uh, technical aide, and they kind of picked out the colors. So they uh, were going through website pictures of California bungalow houses and picked out the colors. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's it for right now, anyway. Uh, the interior has been redone. Uh, obviously, the exterior is done. It's just completely different. I, I, I'm amazed at the transformation from Huge. the institutional block prison wall looking restroom to what they came out with. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm pleased with that. And that was a part of the contract, but not the current contract. That was held out, uh, pulled out separately to be done. Um, 
I think other than that, things are pretty quiet. I did meet with a landmark committee uh, to look at the designation of the Enos House as a landmark. Uh, they're going to uh, consider that and then get back with us. That'll help us through our permitting process. We're also hoping that it helps us secure some funding for some historic preservation funding that might be out there from somewhere. We don't know where that is yet, but we'll challenge Cindy with that one next. <laughs> but um, then uh, this summer, the plan is that uh, we will kick off a fundraising effort uh, specifically towards the house renovation. Um, I understood that um, a permit has been issued for the grading of the site for the house, so that will happen hopefully within the next 30 to 45 days, we'll actually have a site that we can uh, start to put the house onto. So we'll see. You know, it's been a long process. Uh, the gentleman from the Landmark Committee, Mr. Zemitis, reminded me that uh, I took him on a tour of the house in 2009. Wow. So it's been a while. Wow. That's it. And if there's nothing further, um, I'd like to adjourn this afternoon's meeting um, with a moment to remember longtime Commissioner Henry Grennan, who passed last week. He was an advocate for families and youth. He was a leader and a mentor and an inspiration, and I think that we're all fortunate to have known him, and he'll be missed. Our next regular business meeting will be Tuesday, June 13th at um, City Hall at 4 o'clock. And services are, uh, are on Friday. Um, mass at uh, St. Mary's and then a reception at uh, the Veterans Memorial. I believe it's 11 o'clock Mass. Uh, mm -hmm. so I think it's 1.30. 1.30, isn't it? 1.30. 30. So. 1.30 Mass and 1 then Vets. And then the Vets in the afternoon, yes. Okay. Thank you all very much.